Let's see what are server actions and why to use them. Server components were introduced in 2020 by the React.js team. It's a different concept from the server actions. Basically, server components were introduced to help to gain user experience, maintainability, and performance cost. Server actions on their side are built on React actions and are always executed on the server side, both in mobile and web. So why to use server actions? Well, you use server actions if you want to avoid the manual creation of API endpoints. These functions, they are asynchronous server functions. They can be called directly from your components. So let's give an example. I got an application running right now, and I got on my main page here a function called save post, and I got my form, and my form triggers an action called save post, when I actually, when I click on the button here of type submit, here, submit. And I got two inputs, one for the text and one for the title. So here I can type, this is my title, and here this is the content of my post. All right. And when I'm going to click on submit, it's going to trigger this function, save post. And the first thing that we see in this function is that we got a flag, use server. This is how you declare that this function will be actually a uh, action, actually a server action here. So here we catch the title from the form, then the description, and then here for the demonstration, I call one of my endpoint. Of course, here I could call any endpoint that I want. I'm passing the method post, even if it's going to be a post by default. I'm passing actually the body. And I don't want to keep the cache, so I uh, spend here on cache, no cache. So if I go to my endpoint that I'm calling, here I got a list of posts, which only one post. And on the endpoint post that I got, I'm just pushing the new post. So it means that here, if I click on submit, it's supposed to add the post to my list up here. And in my code, if you look very well, I got in my response a console log post. So I open my console, I'm going to get back in here, and I'm going to submit here my post. And here on the client side, nothing happens. It's normal because here I have a server action triggered. But if I come back here, I got the console log with the existing post and the post that has been created on the fly with the UUID generated by the package UUID. So here we see that we saved actually the new post. So here I'm going to put this is my title and this is my content too. And we see that we added into the list of the post the new post. If we look closely at the code, we can see that we created a server action that has been triggered actually by the action here. And this function never happened on the client side. It's all rendered on the server side. So we can use actually server actions to create direct endpoints that we can call like this to uh, actually trigger some action to fetch or to uh, send or post some data to any endpoint. The most common case of a server action would be to write directly into a database. For that, you wouldn't need to create an endpoint inside your API to perform the action. The only thing that you would do is just to create your server actions directly from the component. So server actions really helps you to avoid using the API, and it helps you also to stay on the server side. A last thing, if you would like to use the client here, after that, you would not be able to use the server just after. What you would do is to just take this function and put it into uh, another file externally, and you would just call back actually your file, your hook, directly here inside your client component. Server actions in Next.js 13 helps you to execute server-side function. You would like to use server actions when you want to avoid the manual creation of API endpoints and when you want to define asynchronous server functions. They are always executed on the server, even if we are on mobile or on web. 
And these actions can be defined within the server component and invoked from the server component. 